Hi and welcome back to another review of a brand new model, this time an exquisite steam rail motor exclusive to Kono Model Rail Centre, produced in association with the Great Western Society at Digcut. An extremely long box has arrived from Kono Model Rail Centre, let's get it open. And inside, an extremely well packed, very long box. And it is finally the Great Western Steam Rail Motor. I ordered mine back in 2022, but they were first talked about in 2014. Let's get this out. I've been waiting a long time. And we get our first glimpse of this model. So we're out. The accessories are kept in a nice little pocket here inside the box. But let's get on to the main event. So we start off as ever with the instruction sheet which is a nicely printed uh, piece showing where the valve gear scrolls can go they've got some different ones for if you're using them on uh, less than second radius and also where another little pipe that goes part of the accessories and how to attach your front buffer beam details which is all very nicely clear and laid out and a recommendation for 30 minutes running in each direction to run in then we've got a bit on lubrication and how to open and on the back an exploded diagram. But let's get this little thing onto the turntable and have a look. Well, the first thing that becomes very apparent is this is a very long model, very long indeed. In fact my bit of dis display track was only just long enough to accommodate it. But what we're seeing is beautifully applied details Lovely little um, steam locomotive that's built in, coming into view there. And a view in the front, hopefully it'll be easy to add some crew for that. Some history of the real thing. The Great Western Railway wanted a cost-effective way to improve local passenger services at the start of the 20th century in response to the threat from urban tramways. The rail motor was their solution to this, and such was their success in many areas the patronage rapidly outgrew the capacity available. This livery was introduced from 1912. From 1922 it was replaced by full chocolate and cream livery. These rail motors were built at Swindon. The final batch of the designs were designated Diagram R and were constructed in 1908 with a total of 16 outshot. So the all-important first test. Now remember, this model has a coreless motor in it, so if you do use HF1 or 2 type electronic track cleaners, it's best to switch them off just to make sure you don't damage the motor. Let's go in reverse and paying particular attention on the motion and the valve gear. A little bit reluctant. Well, there he goes. A few little grindy, grunchy sounds could be pickups and things. But for straight out of the box, that's more than acceptable. Let's do some close ups now of all the details. So, just having a look at the front end now, the lovely little lamp appears to be some sort of little maker's plate down below there on the buffer beam. We've got the buffers which are sprung. Uh, footsteps that look a little bit out of shape but who can tell at the moment. Um, and we've got some pipe work fitted already. We've got the bars across the window and a wiper there. Look, very fine little wiper. Now just a look at the driver's side. 
Or is the driver stand on the right? Because it's Great Western. I don't know yet. We'll have a look later. But there's the little delicate valve. God, some of that is delicate as well, isn't it? And as you can see, the luggage sign is painted on perfectly well. Let's just move along midway along the coach and one of the doors. As you see, the logos are all very clear. And it's a lovely door. Looks like it could actually work, doesn't it? Now here we are at the trailing end and similar story, everything looks rather nice. So we'll just swap sides now and uh, then have a look at the trailing end cab as well. So we are at the trailing end and there's something, clearly a driver's valve in there. So it looks like the driver does stand on the right and you can even see the regulator handle sticking down in the middle there. So that answers our question as to which side the driver should stand. Now here we are with a slightly different view of the loco end again that must be the whistle sticking up there and there's the chimney which I understand is loose and it because it uh, the little Vertical parallel boiler, boiler pivots around that so it needs to be loose so you have to watch that that it doesn't drop off um, I think it can be pushed down fairly securely though so overall this looks very impressive next step is to have a look at getting inside see if we can fit some passenger and crew and see what we've got in there now, just before we do look inside I've just discovered the amazing detail on the underframe. And look at all that pipe work. That's been done to a very high standard. We've even got the um, vacuum cylinders there and there. Oh, it all looks very positive so far. I'm very pleased. It runs, it looks fantastic, no glue marks, nothing like that. Kono have uh, done a good job. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a good review because I've seen some of the others. So if it opens fairly easy and we can do what we need in there, I should be delighted and we'll soon be doing a running video. Just when I think I'm going to move to the next step, I discover something else. We've got directional lighting in these lamps. See that's now displaying the red. If I change direction, with a nice white but it's a nice warm white and there's coach lighting which is really dim as you can see DCC people probably be able to have it as bright as they like but that's running at quite a lick that's half speed so according to the instructions it's recommended to lubricate all the valve gear when you get it um, they recommend Woodland Scenics or Hobby Lube HL654. So now we come to starting to open the unit ready for fitting crew and things. And the first job they say is to unclip these door handles sideways. Mm, I don't like this sort of thing, but we'll have a go. Opening. To begin with, you need to unclip what for me is the worst feature of this model, the middle door handrails. These will probably be glued in, mine were. Very carefully use tweezers to move the wire around until it frees up. I even had to use a scalpel on the inside of the step to cut away the glue. Once free, these handrails will attempt to fly around, catching in everything and scratching the body, so be really Special careful. Thing, uh, I found a cart thin plastic travel card great for just getting in between the chassis and the body sides and then very carefully levering on the step plastic step on the chassis to separate um, and do one side at a time and then switch your cards over to the other side so i won't uh, bore you with that on camera note that to open and close the body start at the non-driving end using thin card to disengage the body clips the chassis slides slightly along, then up and out. Note the wires crammed into the corner of the body for the head and tail lamps. These are incredibly delicate, and trying to force the body in can break them. To reassemble, offer the chassis into the body again at the non-driving end. Start from about 2 centimeters back, then slide the chassis in and along before allowing the motor end to drop in place. So inside is quite a surprise. A little vertical boiler is um, got detail on it and pipe work. One thing I didn't mention before was when before you take the body off, you just pull the chimney out and put it to 
one side safely. So I noticed this little well, looks like a reversing lever. I wonder if that's how they change direction. Driver had to step back from the front and uh, change direction there. There we go. A number of details there. Uh, even a little painted gauge just up here with details on the um, what would be lens. How fantastic is that? Anyway, as she's round this way, what are we looking at? Well, there's your loudspeaker. It's already built in for you DCC people. And here is our seating that we'll want to put some passengers in before we put it back together. So when putting in passengers and crew, I did find that the space available is almost under scale. I don't know if it actually is, but HO people, uh, this is a double O scale person, but the HO people fit much better. Um, and also when you're fitting your drivers, make sure that their heads will clear the roof and let them look out. Just show you the other side. So that driver's there up against the levers. And again, you can see the difference between HO and double O scale. I've had to clip feet and things, which I don't like doing. I always think it's jolly painful. But anyway, that's all that needs to be done in there for me, so let's now get the body back on. Now come to fitting further details, we've got a nice set of destination boards. There's four that are blank for you to put your own words on. Or another six actually, with uh, destinations ready done. I think I'm going to do Worcester and Bewdley, just like the names. And they push in to the front. Push them at the front there. We'll see how tight they are. Fitting details at the loco end only. So I've actually returned the model to the turntable for a closer look at the bits and pieces that I've been doing and a quick discussion to say that the worst bit, the very worst bit are these wire handrails that you have to unclip and they were glued in. I'll probably put up a close-up picture to show that um, but I haven't glued them back in. I had to clear them out with a fine drill so that they go back in. Uh, it is a very, very delicate model. Do take care, particularly picking it up that you don't bend any of that lovely fine valve gear as it's just swinging round now you're looking at that very delicate indeed some history of the real thing Several batches were built and by 1905 there were around 50 in service, with around 100 built when production was complete in 1908. A number of trailers were also built in response to the success of the rail motors to increase their capacity. By the mid-1920s most rail motors had been converted to auto trailers to allow longer trains to operate in conjunction with more powerful steam locomotive. So there we are, what do you think? It seems to be running quite well now, even on the inner circuit. But one thing I've noticed is the headlight this end has stopped working. Works in reverse. Little red lights there, fine. But it does not work for white. So I'm gonna have to have a look at that. 
But I think that completes the first look and review. Let me know what you think in the comments and stay tuned for the running video and any fixes that I find are necessary. Here I demonstrate the rail motor paired with a trailer car. Now I know this is a BR Western Region example, but it matches up well enough and ultimately was the original design. You no doubt heard the clicking noise as the model was running. I discovered that the backs of some of the driving wheels were not smooth and were catching the pickups bending them back and forth. I used a scalpel and then some fine wet and dry paper to remove the flashing and plastic gits from the backs of the wheels. This greatly reduced the problem, but probably still needs a little more attention. Mm. 